This isn't a video that's aimed at absolute beginners to stinging nettles. We are going to be using lye, which is potentially dangerous to handle. This is really part of an ongoing uh, exploration of just what you can do with stinging nettles. And this is where we're going. The video will explain more. Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. Today's video is really just an in-progress one. I'm running an experiment at the moment just to see what happens if I try digesting nettles in wood ash lye. It's early days yet, but I think the results are quite promising and I want to share with you what I've been doing and what I think at the end of it so far. There are so many ways to process nettles and I'm always looking for the next thing that works and that may have been used in the past. So this is five stinging nettles. I've split them and I've stripped the bark which contains the fibres away from the stalk. I've soaked them in plain water for two days now, 48 hours almost exactly. I wasn't aiming to wet them and feeling them, there's no sliminess, they're still very, um, very firm. Scraping with a fingernail doesn't feel too much different from normal working them fresh. I had originally planned just to hang these up to dry at this point, see if it makes any difference. But I've been reading online at the moment about quite a few people who've been experimenting with using wood ash lye to degum fibres. And usually this is done a little bit later in the process and it's usually done hot. And what people report over and over again is that their fibres often stick together. So I'm just going to extend this particular experiment by draining off this water. I'm going to pack these into a jar with a lid so that they're safe and then I'm going to top it up with wood ash lye and we're going to give it another two days and we're going to see what the fibres are like at the end of that. I don't know if it's going to make a significant difference. It's going to be much gentler than boiling is but we'll um, we'll try it worth trying these things just to see what happens. I've stuffed the nettles into a kilner jar so they'll be nice and safe. Just out of curiosity I've just dunked some universal indicator paper into the damp nettles just to see what they're currently reading as a pH and it is it's about seven so it's very very slightly alkaline but still essentially in the neutral range. We're going to add some lye and we should get a very dramatic shift. In here, I've got well-aged wood ash lye. This was actually made quite a lot of years ago and it just has been living in the Demijohn ever since. I think it's of soap-making strength, so I'm just going to test it with an egg. If an egg floats in lye, yes, that is really good, strong lye. I'm not sure where the soap suds on top came from. I think it just could be just the breakdown of the lye. So we will take that out and make it safe. And I'm going to pour, oh, I'm going to test it as well, just because we can. Yes, an immediate, very, very strong shift right to the top end of the alkalinity scale. So we're going to pour in wood ash lye to cover. I'm going to put the lid on. And in this particular type of jar, there's a glass ceiling ring and then the ring. I'll tighten that down properly in a minute so nobody can stick their fingers in accidentally. We're going to give it probably two days, but we'll assess it at the end of that and then decide whether that's made any difference at all. Maybe it won't have done. Maybe it will. This has had two days soaking in the lye. It's Definitely looking a little bit lighter. I genuinely don't know whether much is going to have happened. Now, I am wearing gloves. Lye is not nice stuff to get on your skin. And I'm just going to pull things out very slowly, give the spare lye a chance to drip back in a little bit. And then I'm going to get it into a basin just to minimise drips. Okay, nearly there. This lye should still have plenty of oomph in, so if this is promising or it needs to go back in, we can put it back again. All right, now, 
I really want to get my bare hands on this to feel what's going on. I do find it quite hard to assess things with gloves on. But lie is dangerous at this stage. It feels really slippery and slimy, so we're going to rinse that and um, see what it looks like when I can get my hands into it properly. So rinsing through the lye will still leave it quite alkali. But it will make it safe enough for me to assess. I will be neutralising my hands with a dilute vinegar solution afterwards because acids and alkalis help balance each other out. I'm also very used to handling lye. If in doubt, wear gloves throughout. One ribbon, very well rinsed. Now, yeah, it is feeling a little bit slidey to the touch. And what I want to try and do, and as usual, I haven't got... Tesla. Oh, that's the cat in the background. I, I'm going to put this down, and I'm going to give this a little bit of a scrape, and we're going to see how the fibres are coming through. After a fairly firm scraping and another rinse, this is looking very, very promising. The green bark came away much more easily and there are very nice fibres showing up. That's my little heap of scraped off waste. That really didn't take a huge amount of time. It does still feel quite slick and alkali. I think I'm going to rinse this sample through in water with just a drop of vinegar in it just to make sure the alkali is balanced out. We're going to hang it up to dry and the rest, the remaining four strands, can have another, mm, well, let's give the next one another day and we'll just, we'll just see how much of this can be dissolved off. Look at those fibres releasing in the rinsing water. This is very, very promising. Day three, so 24 hours later from the last clip, and these are looking different. They've gone sort of, sort of slightly translucent, really. I'm going to rinse those off, and I'm really, really curious to see how those are feeling. So this strand of nettles, as well as being well rinsed in plain water, has been rinsed in water with the tiniest drop of vinegar in it, just to help balance out the harsh effects of the alkali. You really don't want to take any risks with your skin when working with alkali. And um, I have got absolutely no doubt that I'm getting really nice clean fibres here. The question, I don't know how clearly you can see that. Let me pop it into some water because I think sometimes you can see it better as it sloshes around. Can you see those lovely fine fibres? The question is how much alkali can it take? So how many days soaking? to give you the easiest scraping. Oh, I've left a node there. But with these pesky nodes going away, but without losing too much fibre. And I think at the moment I'm losing quite a lot of fibre in the scraping here. So it might be that I'm about at the limit of what can be done. Or it might mean that if I dissolve for another day or two, I won't need to do much scraping at all. I don't, I don't know the answer. This is a experiment for me. It's certainly making clearing off the nodes a lot easier. And I'm getting very, very fine fibre. I'm trying to find a bit that I haven't done yet on this one. I've been a little haphazard with how I've tackled this particular nettle. I suspect being systematic, as always, is going to be one of the keys to getting really, really, really good results. Let's see what, if we can just rinse some of these free. There are a lot of fine, very silky fibres coming through there, and I've definitely missed a few bits. Okay. I'm going to tidy this bit up. All the uh, mess here is my fault. It's I wasn't systematic with my scraping and I've ended up with probably quite a bit of fibre left over in this waste. So I'm just going to pick through it a little bit. There's definitely a good bit there. And I've got three stalks left. I'm going to give them 24 more hours. And then those ones I think I'm just going to hang to dry. 
and see whether rubbing away the remaining bits after it's been neutralised and dried will be a good option. Scraping is certainly releasing the fibres, but it's still a little bit laborious, even though it's, it's easier. There's no doubt the fibres are coming easily. I'm starting to waffle. Um, yeah. All good though. All very good. And here are my preliminary results. Now remember, this is very much a first experiment. I'm going to need to work on this to get the absolute best out of it. This was the fibre from the batch that was soaked just for two days. So that all of them had two days in plain water, which I don't think changed them very much, but perhaps started the retting process. And then this batch had two days in wood ash lye. And then I scraped it. I really like this fibre. It came clean very, very easily. It's retained just enough of the gum that everything stuck together in easily accessible strips, which means it's going to be brilliant for things like splicing. It should also be very good for spinning, and then the rest will clean up later. This, I think, is a really nice addition to my repertoire. The next one had three days in the lie. Now this is the sample that I didn't scrape very evenly. I jumped around a little bit so there are bits that I didn't scrape very well but the areas that I did scrape well, can you see those white fibres? Those are completely clean nettle fibres. Those are really beautiful. So I think if I'd been prepared to be methodical and put the effort in I would have got pretty much completely clean fibres at this point. There is a tiny bit of sticking together which is mostly where I didn't scrape them properly. But that slight gummy glueiness that people have reported when boiling nettle fibre in lye is definitely present there. Now the third sample, put these back in order so I don't lose them, I did take one nettle out in the end. So each of these three are one stinging nettle each. So I took one out and gave it a bit of a scrape. This is actually fairly similar to sample one. I was a little bit more methodical about it. I was hoping to get those really clean fibres coming through. They are there, but mostly it's, again, slightly stuck together in very even strands. But those nodes have broken away almost completely. So this is really strong and smooth. And that, I think, is a great benefit here. The bit that I didn't scrape at the time. I was planning on just rubbing it between my hands. Well, it is going to work, but I don't think I've actually gained anything from that. It's not crumbling away much more easily than it does when I just dry my fibre. So I'm calling that one a no. This though, I'm calling an absolute yes. So for me, picking my nettles, stripping the bark off, soaking them for a couple of days, which might be optional. I need to do this again and just check whether that makes any difference. And then putting them into a fairly strong lye solution, the sort of strength that you could make soap with for between two and four days. Then rinsing well, neutralising in a drop of vinegar and scraping as normal is giving me very, very even fibre. No obvious leaf node lumps left. I'm looking forward to cording this up and testing it and finding out what I can do with it. So for now, this video has very much been an in-progress bulletin. It's something that I'm working on. I definitely think this is worth experimenting with a little bit more.